Hey guys. Okay. So let me get this all maybe zoomed in a little bit more and the light on here. Maybe brighten it up a bit. Okay. So we have the geometry chapter three study guide. Uh, question number one, what is slope intercept form? Y equals MX plus B. And if I'm going too fast and just go ahead and pause me, but I don't want to make this video an hour long. So uh, what is the formula for slope? Well, slope is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what is point slope form? y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Okay, well, this first one, they give us our slope, which is m, and they give us our y-intercept, which is b. So we simply just have to plug it into the formula. Our slope, negative one-half, x minus five, all right, because this is our m, our slope, and our b, our y-intercept. This one, they give us a slope, and they give us a point. So with a point and a slope, I'm going to use point-slope formula. All right, I'm going to just label this x1, y1, just to give me some guidance. And I'm going to do y minus 0 equals my slope, which is 2 over 3, times x minus negative 6. Okay, well, first things first, I see that if I have two negatives, they become a positive. And next up, I'm just going to distribute. Okay, well, as I rewrite this, I'm just going to write y equals, because whatever that y minus 0, we can just eliminate it. And I'll have 2 over 3x. And then to multiply these, I have a little trick that I like to do. This number divided by 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So plus 4. That's my answer. 2 over 3x plus 4. And if I can't remember that trick, then on my calculator, I've got to turn it on. I would simply do 2 over, pressing this fraction key right here, over 3, and then multiply it by 4. Whoops. Sorry, not 4. 6. <laughs> 2 over 3 times 6, and I would get 4. So there's my answer. All right, same thing here. I have a slope and I have a point. I'm going to use point slope. All right, y minus 6 equals 1 over 4 times x minus negative 8. Remember, this is my x1 and my y1. Again, I have two negatives, so that becomes a positive. I'm going to distribute here, and I'm going to have y minus 6 equals 1 fourth x. Well, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So plus 2. Okay, well now I need to get y by itself, so I'm going to add 6 and add 6. And I end up with y equals 1 fourth x plus 8, because 2 plus 6 is 8. I'll just write this over here. y equals 1 fourth x plus 8. Okay, next up, passes through these points. Okay, well, I don't give my, get my slope this time, but I do have two points, so I can find my slope. And I'm going to label them x1, y1, and x2, y2. And I'm going to find my slope. So m equals negative 5, my y2, minus my y1, 3, over my x2, negative 3, minus my x1, 1. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. When I have two negatives like that, it becomes a positive, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I know my slope is a positive 2. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put it in point slope form using this point because I just don't want to have to worry about the negatives. So I'm going to have y minus 3 equals my slope 2 times x minus 1. All right, we'll distribute and distribute. Then I'll have y minus 3 equals 2x minus 2. And then I'll add 3 and add 3. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. I have y equals 2x plus 1. Next up, another practice problem like this. So I'm going to label again x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to find my slope. <clears throat> Negative 1 minus 14 over 6 minus 12. Negative 1 minus 14 is negative 15. And two negatives make a positive. 6 and 12 is 18. Well, hopefully I see that these can both be reduced by 3, which 15 divided by 3 is 5, negative, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. So my new slope is negative 5 over 6. And I'm just going to use this, well, I guess I'll just use this point. Um, so it doesn't matter, you're going to get the same answer, but I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So y minus 14 equals my slope negative 5 over 6 times x minus negative 12. Well, these two negatives right here become a positive, and then I'm going to distribute. So I'll bring y minus 14 down and have negative 5 over 6x, and then I'll multiply. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Okay, and now I'm just going to add 14 and add 14. And I have y equals negative 5 over 6x plus 4. And I can simply just copy that over here. Negative 5 over 6x plus 4. All right, this time we got to pay attention to the fact that it says perpendicular to y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 2. And it passes through this point. So for perpendicular, remember that it's the opposite reciprocal. Sometimes you'll see me write OR for opposite reciprocal, which means my new slope is going to be the reciprocal 4 over 1 flipped, I mean 1 over 4 flipped to 4 over 1 and the opposite value. So reciprocal is 4 over 1, opposite value makes it positive, basically 4. And I want it to pass through this point. So now I'm going to put it in point slope. I'm going to have y, oh, I can go ahead and label these, x1, y1. y minus 11 equals my slope, 4, times x minus negative 2. All right, well, two negatives make a positive, so this just becomes x plus 2. And now I distribute. x minus 11 equals 4x plus 8. All right, and now I add 11 and add 11. And I'm left with y equals 4x plus 19. Okay, first page is done. Let's do our next page. All right, parallel. So that's a relief. We just need to use the same slope. So our sl same slope is going to be negative 2 over 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in point slope. I labeled my x1 and my y1. And I'm going to do y minus negative 1 equals 
my slope negative 2 over 3 x minus negative 6. Well, two negatives make a positive. So I went ahead and just turned those into positives. And I'm going to distribute. So y plus 1 equals negative 2 thirds x. And now minus, because a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. All right, and then minus 1, minus 1. And I end up with y equals negative 2 over 3x minus 5. All right. So parallel again, but this time it's not in y equals mx plus b form. So we need to transition it that way. I'm going to start by moving my 5x over. So minus 5x minus 5x. I have negative 4y equals negative 5x plus 4. I'm going to get y by itself. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. All right. Well, I'm going to have y equals 5 over 4. Positive, though, because there's two negatives. So 5 over 4. x and then 4 divided by 4 is simply negative 1, because it was a positive 4 divided by a negative 4. And that is my new slope. All right, so now I know my new slope is 5 over 4. I need to take that new slope and use this point and put it into the equation. So x1, y1, we're going to use point slope y minus 2 equals my slope 5 over 4 x minus negative 8. Okay, so this will become a positive, and now I'll distribute. I'll have y minus 2 equals 5 over 4 x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. So plus 10. And now I'm just going to add 2 to both sides to finish getting y by itself. And my new equation is 5 over 4x plus 12. All right. Next up, I need to put these all in y equals mx plus b form so that I can compare their slopes and determine if they're parallel. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and label them line 1 and line 2. I see for line 2 that my slope is already there for me. It's negative 2. This one, I'm going to need to finagle a little bit. So I'm going to move my 10x over, and I'm going to have a 5y equals negative 10x minus 5. All right, and then to get it by itself, I'm going to divide by 5 and divide by 5. I'll be left with y equals, well, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2x, and then negative 5 divided by 5 is a negative 1. So I see that my slope for the second line is negative 2. My slopes are the same. Whoops. <laughs> same, so they are parallel. All right, right here, oh gosh, I don't have the luxury of having one already in y equals mx plus b form, slope intercept, so I need to maneuver both of them. I'm going to move my x over. This is going to be my line one, and this will be my line two. So minus 4x, minus 4x, I'm left with 5y equals negative 4x plus 10. All right, divide by 5, divide by 5. I'm going to kind of finish solving it over here. This is still line 1. And I'll have y equals, well, negative 4 over 5x, and then 10 divided by 5 is 2. 
So my slope for my first line is negative 4 over 5, right? My m, my slope, right here, this number. For my second line, I'll go ahead and subtract 5x, subtract 5x, and end up with negative 5y equals negative 5x plus 28. Okay, well, I'm going to divide by negative 5 and divide by negative 5. And I'll see, here, let's, kind of running out of room here. I'll see that y equals, well, negative 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 28 and negative 5, you can't really divide, so minus 28 over 5. Okay, so my slope for this line is 1. I have negative 4 over 5 and 1. There's nothing alike here, so they are neither. They are not perpendicular, and they are not parallel. Okay, that's good to know. Let's get to our next line. Well, here we have line 1 and line 2. Yay, they gave us a slope for line 2. We don't have to sort it out. So I know that for line 2, my slope is negative 3. Now let's go ahead and solve for line 1. Just because I've been running out of space, I'm going to move it over here. So I'm going to have x minus 3y equals 15. I'll subtract x, subtract x. Negative 3y equals negative x plus 15. Okay, well, I'm going to divide by negative 3 and divide by negative 3 and have y equals well, here's a 1 that we don't always necessarily write, and a negative and a negative. So a positive 1 third x, and then 5 divided by negative 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. So I now know my slope of this line equals positive 1 third. Well, this is negative 3 and positive 1 third. Those are opposite reciprocals, so the lines are perpendicular. All right, for this one, y equals 5. We go to our y-axis, which is right here, and plot 5. It's a horizontal line. We can go to our x-axis and plot a negative 1. It's a vertical line because one slope is horizontal, a zero slope, and one slope is undefined, a vertical slope. They have no choice but to be perpendicular. Okay. Now, graphing the following lines. I always start with my y-intercept, so I look and see that that's a positive 1. It's my y-intercept, so it's on the y-axis. I plot that point. And then I look here and I see, oh, negative 2 over 3. So I know that my slope, if it's negative, is going to go in a downward direction. If it's positive, it's going to go in an upward direction. So I know that this line needs to go down. Okay, so I'm going to go down two, one, two, to the left, three. I could also go up two, I mean, sorry, to the right three. I could also go up two and to the left three. I'll take my straight edge. Hopefully you have a straight edge. I don't seem to have a straight edge handy right now. And I will just connect the dots. And there's my line. Okay, over here, x equals 2. I go to my x-axis. I find where the 2 is. And I just draw a line straight up and down through the 2. Okay, so they tell us that the measure of angle 9, which is right here, is 92. So 92. All right, and they want us to find angle 10. 
okay, we can do that because look at this. So if I cover up these, this set right here, hopefully you can see the angle nine and angle five, they're alternate exterior angles. So five would also be 92. All right, and if you're having a hard time seeing that, maybe if I turn the paper this way, here's my parallel lines, the transversal, alternate exterior angles. So angle five is 92 degrees. All right, they want us to find 10. So if I go ahead oops, and look at it like this, I can see that these two angles are same side interior angles. So if I know that angle five equals 92 degrees, I can find angle 10. I'll simply subtract it from 180. 180 minus 92. And I will get the measure of angle 10 equals 88 degrees. Make sure you know your angle relationships. These are same side interior angles, which sum to 180. Okay, we're using the same diagram because we're using all the way down through question 19. So all the way down. Okay, it says if angle eight, which is right here, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and white out this 92 so it doesn't confuse you guys. If angle eight is 18X minus 44, and the measure of angle three is 8X minus 10, then find the measure of angle two, which is right here. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to figure out what the measure, what the value of x is. And since I know eight and three are same side interior angles, right, same side of the transversal on the interior, I'm going to go ahead and add them together, 18x minus 44 plus 8x minus 10 equals 180. All right, I'll combine my like terms first. So I'll end up with 26x and a negative 44 and a negative 10 will give me a negative 54. And that equals 180. So now I add 54 and I add 54 and I end up with 26x equals 234. Well, now I divide by 26 and divide by 26, and I end up with x equals 9. Sorry, a little mental math there. <laughs> okay, it says find angle 2. Okay, well, if you're looking at this, maybe at an angle, this 3 is in the lower left-hand corner of these four angles, and this 2 is in the lower left-hand corner. So, three and two are going to be congruent because they're corresponding. So to find the measure of angle two, I'm gonna plug X in to angle three. The measure of angle th three, but it's also the measure of angle two. So eight times nine minus 10. 72 minus 10 gives me 62 degrees. The measure of angle 2 equals 62 degrees. Okay, now we're going to name the angle relationship. So angle 1 and angle 3. All right, well, again, maybe you turn your paper. This is in the lower left-hand corner, and this is the lower left-hand corner. These lines are all parallel, so that would be corresponding angles. Okay, and then nine and six, those are, whoops, nine and six are vertical angles. Okay, 11 and three, these are our parallel lines. They are inside of them on opposite sides. They would be alternate interior angles, angles 1 and 11. Well, here's the parallel lines I'm looking at this time. They're outside of the parallel lines 
on opposite sides of the transversal. That would make them alternate exterior angles. And then lastly, 7 and 12. Well, they're not corresponding because they're not in matchy-matchy locations. They're not vertical. Well, you go through the list and you'll find there's no relation. So, none. Okay, still referring to the same example, which I apologize, hopefully you have your study guide because I think if I zoom out too much, you won't be able to see. We're talking about angle four and six. So here's angle four, here's angle six. The lines that they are touching right here oh, are lines A and line C. So A and C would be parallel. And four and six, they're in matchy-matchy locations. Lower left-hand corner, lower left-hand corner. Converse of corresponding angles, CA. Okay, converse, because we're trying to prove the lines parallel. Okay, so let's look up here. Four and eight, the two lines they're touching that could possibly be parallel are lines A and lines B. And four and eight, their angle relationship, they're on the outside of the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal, would be converse, of alternate exterior angles. And I'm just shortening it with letters for now. Okay, you can do the same thing. Um, 10 and 3. Here's angle 10. Here's angle 3. All right, the parallel lines we're talking about are A and C. 10 is touching A. 3 is touching C. So A is parallel to C. And the justification would be that these are on the inside of my parallel lines on opposite sides. So converse of alternate opposite sides interior inside my parallel lines angles. And lastly, for the converse, angle 10 and angle 5. Well, they are both touching lines A and B, so we would say A is parallel to B. And the justification would be if they add to 180, converse of same side interior angles. Okay, well, let's look at this one. This is the angle triangle angle sum theorem. We know that all three of these angles add to 180. So let's add these three together and set it equal to 180. 10x minus 11 plus 3x minus 2 plus 3x plus 1 all equals 180. So I'm going to combine my like terms first. All right, and 10 plus 3 plus 3 gives me 16x. And then I'll combine my constants, the number without a variable next to them. Negative 11 and negative 12 and negative 1. I mean, ne negative 2. They give me a negative 12. All equal to 180. So now I'm going to add 12. And add 12, and I'll get 16x equals 192. Divide by 16, divide by 16, x will equal 12. And that's all it asked me to do was to solve for x, so I'm good there. Moving right along. Okay, so remember, these are my remote interior angles and they sum or add to this exterior angle. So to solve for x, I'm going to do 11x minus 1 plus 20x minus 3 equals 151. 
All right, and I'm going to combine my like terms. 31x, negative 1 and negative 3, or negative 4, equals 151. Add 4 and add 4. 31x equals 155. Divide by 31. Divide by 31. X equals 5. Okay, so here's where things start to get a little kind of confusing. First angle that I am going to solve for is going to be angle 2 because I know that these two angles right here are alternate interior angles. So this angle is going to be 52 degrees, and I'll put alternate interior angles right here. Maybe that will help. Okay, next up, so I'll go ahead and write 52. I can solve for angle 1. For angle 1, angle 1, I'm going to do 180 because these two line, these two angles make up a straight line. So 180 minus 52, and I will get 128. So I know that that's a linear pair. And that together they make 180. Okay, so I can also solve for angle four because these are parallel lines. This is my transversal. These two sum to 180, right? So for angle four, I'm gonna do 180 minus 47. And that equals 133 degrees. So 133 degrees. Okay. For angle three, oh, and here I could write same side interior, right? Because these were same side interior angles. For 33, Hopefully I can see this is my transversal and these two angles are alternate interior angles. So three has no choice but to be 47 degrees and that's alternate interior angles. So 47 degrees. In angle five, hopefully we can see it in a couple ways. We can see that these two angles and angle five make up a triangle, which is 180 degrees, or these three angles make up a straight line, which is 180 degrees. Either way, I'm subtracting 52 and 47 from 180. And I get 81 degrees. Okay, moving right along. First, I can see right here, angle five. That's the first one that when I look at, I wanna solve for because I know that this is 90. I know that's 44 and well, these three angles make a triangle. So for angle five, I'm gonna do 180 minus 90 minus 44 and that will give me 46 degrees. Then hopefully I can see the angle five and angle four, they're inside our parallel lines here, right? And here's the transversal that cuts through. I can see that they're alternate interior angles. So forty six degrees. Okay. And then hopefully, if I'm looking at this transversal, I can see the angle three and 44, they're alternate interior angles. I'll write this right here, alternate interior angles for both of these. So that's 44 degrees. And then hopefully I can see that angle one and angle three, they're vertical angles. So, 
So I know, oh wait, whoops, sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> Not one and three, those aren't vertical angles. There's a thing coming through them. Angle four and angle two are vertical angles. So since I know the angle four is 46, then I know that angle two is 46 as well. And lastly, angle one, well, if I know the angle four, sorry, you gotta kind of ignore this one. I'm looking at this line right here, this line right here. If I know that angle four equals 46, I can simply do 180 for this whole line 180 minus 46, and I will get 134 degrees. They're a linear pair. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Hour-long video. <laughs> well, these are alternate interior angles and hopefully you know that alternate interior angles are equal to each other. So I'm going to set them equal to solve for x. 13x minus 21 equals 5x plus 75. I'm going to move my x's to the left so minus 5x. I'll have 8x minus 21 equals 75, and then I'll add 21 and add 21, get 8x equals 96. Well, all I need to do to get x by itself is divide by 8, and I end up with x equals 12. Last one, two proofs. All right, well, they give me two givens here, so I'm gonna go and look for them first. Well, A is parallel to B, that's my first given. And B is parallel to C, that's my next given. Okay, now I wanna see why angle 10 and angle two are congruent. So here's angle 10 and here's angle two. Oh, well, there's my parallel lines. They're on opposite sides of the transversal on the inside. Oh, that's alternate interior angles. Okay, that's good to know. Now we see that um, 12 and 2 are congruent. So here's 2, here's 12. They're on the outside of these two parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal. So that's alternate exterior angles. And then we go ahead and say that 10 and 12 are congruent. Well, we said that 10 was congruent to 2, and that 2 was also congruent to 12, and then we got rid of that 2. 2, 2, 2, <coughs> excuse me, and said that 10 is congruent to 2. Well, that, my friends, would be the transitive property, like those ballerinas we talked about. Okay, well, if we want to say that A is parallel to C, we want to look back at this last relationship, 10 and 12. If we turn our paper sideways, maybe you'll see that this is in the lower left-hand corner and this is in the lower left-hand corner, meaning that they're corresponding angles. But because we're trying to prove these congruent you're going to go ahead and say converse of corresponding angles, all right? Because converse, we're trying to prove them parallel. So next up, L is parallel to M. We're going to write given. And then line X bisects angle ABC, given. Here is angle ABC, line X comes through and bisects. So I have a congruent angle here 
in here. All right, well, angle one and angle three, those are congruent because they're corresponding angles. or CA if you'd rather write that. And then angle one and angle two. Well, above it, they told me that line X bisects that angle. And then they tell me these two angles are congruent. Well, that would simply be definition of an angle bisector. Okay, so now up here we had angle one is congruent to angle three. And down here, angle one is congruent to angle two. Then all of a sudden the one goes away and we say that they're equal to each other. That would be transitive. And my friends, you are done. Hopefully you stayed tuned for the whole video and I will see you soon.